Hello everyone, I'm here with my video for the students of class 10. This is from the book First Flight and this is chapter 1, A Letter to God by G. L. Puentes. This story depicts that faith can move mountains. It is a perfect example of a man's unwavering faith in God. Let us read the text. While you read the text, I'll keep explaining. I hope this video is helpful to you. At the end, I have question and answers. I hope it will really be helpful for each one of you. So let us start reading the text. The house, the only one in the entire valley, sat on the crest of a low hill. From this height, one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with flowers that always promised a good harvest. The only thing the earth needed was a downpour or at least a shower. Throughout the morning, Lencho, who knew his fields intimately had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast. Now this is the story about a farmer, Lencho. Lencho was a very hard working farmer. He had worked the whole year on his corn fields which were now ready with flowers and it was a very good harvest. Only a shower was needed. Lencho, being impulsive in nature, kept sitting the whole day, looking towards the sky, towards the northeast direction. He expected rain, clouds to come from that direction only. This shows that he was an experienced farmer. His house was the only house in the whole valley. Valley is a place that is between two mountains or two hills and his house sat on the crest of a low hill that is on top of a low hill and from there one could see the river, the whole valley, his crops, everything could be seen from the hill. Now we are really going to get some water, woman. The woman who was preparing supper replied, yes, God willing. The older boys were working in the field while the smaller ones were playing near the house until the woman called to them all, come for dinner. It was during the meal that just as Lencho had predicted, big drops of rain began to fall. In the northeast, huge mountains of clouds could be seen approaching. The air was fresh and sweet. The man went out for no other reason than to have pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. And when he returned, he exclaimed, These aren't raindrops falling from the sky. They are new coins. The big drops are ten cent pieces and the little ones are fives. Now, as I told you, the whole day, Lencho kept sitting, looking towards the sky in the northeast direction because he expected rain to come, the clouds to come from that direction and he expected a good rain. He came inside the house. He told his wife that they, were, they would definitely get rain that evening. The woman who was preparing supper Woman here is referred to Lencho's wife. She was preparing supper for each of them. That is dinner, that is food. Uh, she was also a person who had faith in God. And that is why she replied, yes, God willing. That means if God is willing, God wants to, he will definitely uh, shower rain. The older boys of Lencho, they were working in the field. The smaller ones were playing near their house. The mother called everybody for dinner. 
as they sat down to have dinner it started raining lencho was very happy lencho went out in the fresh and uh, refreshing atmosphere to feel the pleasure of rain on his body he was very happy that it had started raining and he came and told his wife that these rain drops were not only rain drops they were just like new coins because he expected to earn good profit by selling his crops that is why he said that the big drops were 10 cent pieces and the little ones were fives with a satisfied expression he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain but suddenly a strong wind began to blow along with the rain very large hailstones began to fall these truly did resemble new silver coins the boys exposing themselves to rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls it's really getting bad now exclaimed the man i hope it passes quickly it did not pass quickly for an hour the hail rained on the house the garden the hillside the corn field on the whole valley the field was white as if covered with salt now when it started raining lencho was very satisfied he became very happy he looked at his whole corn field uh with great satisfaction but suddenly the strong wind began to blow and it became very bad the weather uh, conditions spoiled and the rain got transformed into a hailstorm large hail stones began to fall on the field which resembled new silver coins the boys they were innocent they did not know that this was something dangerous they went uh, to collect the frozen pearls they were very excited but lencho was very very sad he knew this was something very bad he wanted the hail storm to pass away very quickly but it continued for an hour and in an hour the whole field the whole valley his whole corn field the hillside everything was full of hail stones it seemed as if the whole area was covered with white salt not a leaf remained on the trees the corn was totally destroyed the flowers were gone from the plants lencho's soul was filled with sadness when the storm had passed he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons a plague of locusts would have left more than this the hail has left nothing this year we will have no corn that night was a sorrowful one all our work for nothing there is no one who can help us we'll all go hungry this year so after the hail storm that continued for an hour everything was covered with hailstones the whole valley was white as if salt had been scattered on the field not a leaf remained on the tree the whole corn was destroyed all the flowers had gone lencho was full of sadness because the whole year he had worked on that field and now the whole year they would have to go hungry he felt that all his work was for just nothing he became very sorrowful and he told his sons that even if a plague of locusts would have attacked his crops they would have left more than this the hail had just left nothing everything had got spoiled but in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house in the middle of the valley there was a single hope help from god don't be so upset even though this seems like a total loss remember no one dies of hunger that's what they say no one dies of hunger 
all through the night lencho thought only of his one hope the help of god whose eyes as he had been instructed see everything even what is deep in one's conscience lencho was an ox of a man working like an animal in the fields but still he knew how to write the following sunday at daybreak he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to town and place in the mail it was nothing less than a letter to god now in that whole area in that whole valley it was only lencho's house there was no one else who stayed there so no help could be expected from anywhere they all had only a single hope and that was help from god he felt that by being upset it nothing could help them only god was there who would help them he as he had always been instructed that god was everywhere and he uh, the god could read a person's conscience whatever a person was going through was well understood by god and so he had all the hopes only from god lencho was an ox of a man this means to say that he was a very hard working person who worked like an ox on the field but still he was literate he knew how to write so the following sunday at daybreak that is early in the morning he began to write a letter that he had thought that he would carry to the town himself and put in the mailbox and this was nothing less than a letter to god god he wrote if you don't help me my family and i will go hungry this year i need a 100 pesos in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes because of because the hail storm he wrote to god on the envelope put the letter inside and still troubled went to god went to town at post office he placed a stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox one of the employees he who was a postman and also helped at the post office went to his boss laughing heartily and showed him the letter to god never in his career as a postman had he known that address the postmaster a fat amiable fellow also broke out laughing but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk commented what faith i wish i had the faith of the man who wrote this letter starting up a correspondence with god so as we have already talked about lencho's faith in god his unwavering faith in god he wrote a letter to god and he wrote that he needed god's help that is 100 pesos in order to sow his field again and to survive for the whole year with his family and he wrote everything about the hailstorm on the envelope he addressed the letter to god he went to the post office put a stamp on it and he dropped the letter in the mailbox which was taken out by one of the employees in the post office the postman who took it out when he read that the letter was addressed to god he started laughing heartily went in and showed this to his master that is the postmaster he had never known such an address he had been a postman for quite some years but no one had ever addressed a letter to god and so he started laughing the postmaster who was a fat and pleasant looking man a friendly type of a man also started laughing but immediately he turned serious because he was shocked and surprised to see this type of faith in god a faith in god that had made a person start a correspondence or a conversation or a communication with god 
So in order not to shake the writer's faith in God, the postmaster came up with an idea. Answer the letter. But when he opened it, it was evident that to answer it, he needed something more than goodwill, ink and paper. But he stuck to his resolution. He asked for money from his employees. He himself gave a part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity. So when the postmaster was shocked to see a letter addressed to God, he wanted to open up the letter and answer the letter to God because he did not want the faith of any man to shaken up. But when he opened the letter and read the letter, he knew that only a good will or ink and paper were not enough to answer the letter. They needed 100 pesos. But the postmaster did not want to break or shake the faith that Lencho had in God. So he stuck to his resolution. He requested his employees to give or contribute a part of their salary. He himself gave a part of his salary. His friends too helped and everybody helped this to uh, depict an act of charity. It was impossible for him to gather together the 100 pesos. So he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half. He put the money in an envelope addressed to Lencho and with it a letter containing only a single word as signature God. The following Sunday, Lencho came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter for him. It was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed looked on from his office. Lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money, such was his confidence, but he became angry when he counted the money. God could not have made a mistake, nor could he have denied Lencho what he had requested. So it so happened when the postmaster stuck to his resolution of trying to help Lencho, he was not able to gather the full amount that is 100 pesos, but whatever was collected, that was more than half of the amount, he put the money in an envelope, addressed it to Lencho and put a letter inside containing a single signature and that was God. The following Sunday, Lencho who had full com complete faith in God came a little early than usual to take his letter. The postman himself handed him the letter. Postmaster, who was feeling very happy, content or by doing a good deed, kept looking from inside. Lencho did not show surprise on getting the money. In fact, it, the expression gave a feeling that he was quite confident that he would get the money but he seemed very angry when he counted the money. He knew that God could not make a mistake, nor could he have denied Lencho of the request. Such was the faith in God. That is why he felt that God could not have made a mistake. And so he became very angry on seeing that the amount of money was not full 100 pesos. Immediately, Lencho went up to the window to ask for pen and paper, pen and ink, paper and ink. On the public writing table, he started to write with much wrinkling of his brow caused by the effort he had to express his ideas. When he finished, he went to the window to buy a stamp, which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist. The moment the letter fell into the mailbox, the postmaster went to open it. It said, God, 
Of the money that I asked for, only 70 pesos reached me. Send me the rest since I need it very much. But don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks. Lencho. So when Lencho received the envelope, he opened it and was very angry on seeing that the amount was not 100 pesos, but it was only 70 pesos. He became very angry. He went and asked for paper and ink and he started writing a second letter to God. The wrinkling on his brow showed that he was very, very angry in whatever he was expressing in the letter. He wrote the letter, he bought a stamp and he licked the stamp, affixed it and gave a blow of his fist on the stamp to paste it. This gesture shows his anger. The moment the letter fell into the mailbox, Lencho left but postmaster quickly went and opened the letter and the second letter read that the money he had received was only 70 pesos and it was not the full amount and he needed the rest that is the 30 pesos and he also added in the letter that God should not send the rest of the money through mail because the post office employees were a bunch of crooks. That means Lencho felt that it was the fault or it was evident that God could not have made a mistake but the post office employees were a bunch of crooks who had probably stolen the 30 pesos that were missing from the envelope. The irony is here that although the post office employees did their best to help, they did not get the recognition, they did not get the credit. In fact, they were called a bunch of crooks. It is true that there are people who do not believe in the existence of humanity. They don't know that there are still people who help or who are ready to help without expecting anything in return. One should not be judgmental or jump into conclusions without knowing the exact fact. And that is the theme of the story. Other thing that we learn here is full faith and hope in God, unwavering faith in God that can move mountains. I hope you have understood the chapter. The explanation was okay. I hope it is it was helpful to you. And now let us start with the question and answers. Question one, give a brief description of the view from Lencho's house. The answer is Lencho's house was situated on the crest of a low hill and it was the only one in the valley. One could easily see the river and the field of ripe corn from there. Question 2. Why was Lencho looking towards northeast? What does this show about his character? The answer is throughout the morning, Lencho stared at the sky in the northeast direction because he expected a light rain would come from that direction and would shower on his field. This shows that Lencho was experienced but impulsive in nature. What did Lencho compare the raindrops to and why? The answer is Lencho compared the raindrops to new coins because the crop needed the rain badly and it was the sign of good harvest. Good harvest meant prosperity for Lencho as he needed the money to fulfill his basic needs. Question 4. What happened when it started to rain? The answer is, when it started raining, Lencho regarded his field with satisfaction. He was happy to see his crop draped in a curtain of rain. He ho hoped to reap a good harvest. His children ran out in rain and he too went out for no other reason than to have pleasure of feeling the rain on his body. 
Question 5. What happened to Lencho's field after rain? The answer is, after a sudden gust of wind had begun to blow and huge hailstones began to fall along with the rain. Thus, the rain changed. The hailstones destroyed Lencho's field. The flowers were gone from the plants and the corn was destroyed. Not a leaf was left. Lencho's soul was filled with sadness. He felt that a plague of locusts would have left more than this. The hail had left nothing and that that year they would have no corn. Question 6. Why did Lencho write a letter to God? The answer is, when Lencho's crops were completely destroyed by the hailstorm, he wrote a letter to God because he was the only hope in his despair. Lencho had true and unwavering faith in God. Lencho asked God to send 100 pesos to sow his field again and to support his family throughout the year. Question 7. Who was Lencho and what circumstances forced him to write a letter to God? The answer is, Lencho was a hard-working farmer who lived with his family on a crest of a low hill. He was a very caring and God-loving man. Though he was a farmer, he could read and write. Lencho eagerly waited for the rainfall in order to get good harvest and he became happy when it came. But the pleasing rain changed into hailstorm and destroyed his crop. He became sad and was worried about his family as they might remain hungry that year. His last hope was help from God as he had complete faith in him. Hence, he wrote a letter to God asking him to send 100 pesos to survive and to re-harvest. Question 8. Why and how did Postmaster help Lencho? The answer is, the postmaster was determined to help Lencho. He did not want Lencho's faith in God to be shaken, so he asked his employees and friends to help Lencho. He also contributed a part of his salary for this act of charity. Question 9. Explain the qualities of post office employees. Answer. The post office employees represented the people who believed in helping others. They were kind and helpful. They cooperated with each other and contributed to their best of the capability just to keep Lencho's faith in God. In God, they had love, concern, compassion and empathy for Lencho. Question 10. Why was Lencho angry when he received the letter? The answer is, when Lencho received the letter, he opened the envelope. He at once became angry on counting the amount in it. There were only 70 pesos in the envelope, whereas he had asked for 100. He had true faith in God and knew that God couldn't have made a mistake. He felt that the post office employees had stolen the money. Question 11. Describe the character of Lencho in the light of his faith and attitude towards God and man. Answer is, Lencho was a hard-working farmer who had immense faith in God. He had such an immense faith in existence and helpfulness of God that he started a correspondence with him. He wrote a letter to God requesting him to send him 100 pesos. When he received 70 pesos, he was not surprised at all. He doubted the integrity of the post office employees who he thought had stolen his 30 pesos. He was a poor judge of human nature. His attitude towards man was negative. He could not think of a help from man. Question 12. Why did Lencho not want the money to be sent through mail? The answer is, Lencho wrote in his second let letter that he received only 70 pesos, but he needed 100 pesos in total. He requested God not to send rest of the money by post since the post office employees were a bunch of crooks and would steal the money. Question 13. Do you think that Lencho was right to call the post office employees a bunch of crooks? Why or why not? Lencho called the post office employees a bunch of crooks as he did not get full money that he had demanded. 
he could not believe that god had sent him any less so he doubted these people but he was not right to call them a bunch of crooks judging someone without going deep into facts is incorrect question 14 give a character sketch of lencho lencho was a simple man and a hard working farmer he worked as an ox in his field lencho's entire crops were badly destroyed by the hailstorm so he became very sad as he was worried about his family he was an optimistic person who had an unwavering faith in god although his only source of living was taken away he didn't lose hope he had his last hope in god he was confident that god would help him in his distress lencho was an innocent atheist who didn't know that there was no such living person as god who could send him money he had blind faith in god and sought solution of his problem from god only but he doubted the integrity of the post office employees who he thought had stolen his 30 pesos he was a poor judge of human nature his attitude towards man was negative he could not think of help from man question 15 how do you like the character of the postmaster in the story a letter to god give reasons for your answer the answer is the postmaster was a fat and friendly fellow he was a sensible human being he first laughed looking at the letter which had a strange address but soon he became serious he was surprised at the faith that lencho had in god he wanted his faith not to be shaken the postmaster himself gave a part of his salary and also requested his employees and a few friends to contribute for charity he felt happy and satisfied when lencho received the money This shows that he was a kind and empathetic person as well. He loved to help others without taking any credit. He was a good human being and had a good relation with his employees. He displayed good leadership qualities by asking each post office employee to contribute to his extent. He encouraged to perceive others in a more positive light. He was a man who fostered a sense of community building and spread positivity which helps in creating a healthy society. Question 16. Humanity still exists. This is what we get to know after reading a letter to God in which firm faith in God of a poor farmer and helpfulness of the post office employees are aptly depicted thought. write a paragraph on its values in about 80 to 100 words give a parag- give the paragraph a suitable title existence of humanity humanity is the mother of all religions after reading a letter to god our faith in humanity stirs for strong we learn from the story that there are people who help others without any self interest the postmaster and the post office employees lay an example for every one of us to be kind though they all laughed at his letter they were really moved by the grip of faith lencho had in god the way they all decided to help the stranger in his hard times restores our faith in the existence of humanity and motivates us to be a noble and kind person question 17 who does lencho think has taken the rest of the money what is the irony in the situation the answer is lencho thinks that the post office employees had taken the rest of his money as he had demanded 100 pesos from god and in the letter there were only 70 pesos and god could not make such a mistake he assumes that they had stolen the money the irony in the situation is that lencho suspects those people who helped him in his problem and tried to keep his faith alive in god question 18 there are two kinds of conflict in the story between human and nature and between human themselves 
how are these conflicts illustrated let us look at the first one that is conflict between human and nature the conflict between humans and nature is illustrated by the destruction of lencho's crops by the hailstorm as lencho was expecting a good rain to have good harvest as that was the only hope he had for his earning he worked hard to feed his family but nature turned violent and destroyed everything conflict between humans the story also illustrated another conflict between humans themselves as the postmaster along with his friends and staff sent lencho money that lencho had demanded from god although they didn't know lencho lencho blamed them for taking away some amount of money he called them a bunch of crooks this shows that man does not have faith in another man therefore giving thereby giving rise to this conflict question 19 what is the moral of the story the answer is the moral of the story is a the moral of the story a letter to god is that extreme faith in almighty can give you a ray of hope even in the darkest time it is the story of extreme faith in god faith can move mountains faith and hope are symbols of life i hope you enjoyed the story and this video was helpful to you do let me know in the comment section of anything else you want from this story give your comments on the video too let me know which part of the story did you like most take care of yourself we'll meet in the next video till then bye